That's right, guys. It's content. Content. Yeah, I, I didn't miss this show, too. So, yes, guys, welcome back to hopefully the triumphant return of Commentary Corner. I'm not sure, but hopefully not, because we all know we just hate this show as much as everyone hates this show as much as I do. But, yes, Commentary Corner is back. Probably for this one video, because I've had like five commentary corner videos recorded and just thrown away. This time I'm actually getting it right away, right on the news, right on the money. So let's just jump into the fact why the scenery is different. So, yeah. New set, I know. We moved houses. That's just a little update, I guess. We moved houses so that we have a new set down here. So you'll be seeing this couch a lot more often and maybe newer Diamond King videos, newer Commentary Corner videos, newer live streams or anything like that. You'll be seeing this beautiful couch and this beautiful wall, so that's why the scenery is different. But that's not why we're here. We're here because of animal abuse. So you remember Pollution Entertainment, the guy who killed his cat? This situation that I'm going to talk about is not as bad as Pollution situation, because in which the animal did not die, because it's a 75 pound uh, big ass dog instead of a pretty pro a lightweight cat who got his spine like snapped in half. But we do have another case of animal abuse, and I should probably take these glasses off if I'm gonna if I'm gonna read this stuff. So uh, there's this person, uh, Brooke. Brooke Houts? No, I'll, I'll just call her Brooke. There's this YouTuber, Brooke, who released uh, a video that was actually uncut footage from what video she was supposed to be releasing. And the footage showed her abusing her dog because the dog was being energetic. Now, I'm not, not trying to pull your leg. I'm actually being serious that she did abuse the dog. Make of it as you will, but here's the footage. What's up everyone, it's your girl Brooke here today. For this video, I wanted to prank my dog. She's over there. I put plastic wrap on the door. I'm gonna have him run out. We're just gonna see what he does. I don't know. It doesn't phase you. Well, as you can tell. Stop! We love you. We love you or whatever. We love you. We love you. We love you. Most of you probably thought that's pretty bad, right? I mean, she tackled the dog to the floor, kind of like how that bagel guy got tackled Mama to the floor, except the bagel guy thing was funny in this isn't. Uh, and she spit on the dog. Why would you spit on your dog if it just acts, if it gets in, it's a fucking dog! The fo well, the footage was uploaded to Twitter about nine hours ago, and a few people that I follow started tweeting about it. So I just decided to look into it. So, you know, I watched the footage. She spit on the dog. So I went to her Twitter account. So Brooke's Twitter account. And she had a four-page response, which I'm going to read to you right now. Now this response, I'm going to make fun of, criticize, do whatever the hell I want, because she abused the dog and there's no way of getting out of that. So, without further ado, this is Brooke, H-O-U-T-S, is response to the whole ordeal. So, uh, to start off the apology, we have, to everyone who has been commenting on my social media as of recently, anything I say isn't going to make those who believe I'm a bad person stop believing that. That is true. This apology sucks. It's not even a. I'm not even gonna call an apology, okay? But I'm aware of this. I apologize to anyone who's been affected negatively by this footage. I mean, nobody's really being affected negatively, but people are just gonna be naturally pissed off when they see someone tackling a dog to the ground and then spitting on it for no apparent fucking reason. But affected is the right word. I'll say. First off, I want to address the uncut footage. What else are you going to address? <laughs> the uncut footage is why people are mad. Just saying. 
on, on the day in particular that the video was filmed, and actually this past week, things have been out, things in outside of my, things in my outside life have been less than exceptional. I'm not going to play the victim card or any of that sort, but I want to point out that I am rarely as upset as I was shown in the footage. First hypocrisy, you're not going to pull the victim card, then literally a few words later you pull like a citation of the victim card. You pull like a subsidiary of the victim card. You just worded it a little differently, it's not, like not the way victim cards are usually pulled, but it still counts as a victim card, just a little bit of a subsidiary of the victim card. The bubbly, happy-go-lucky brook that you often see in my videos is typically an accurate representation of me, but it's obvious that I'm playing up my mood in the, vi in the this video when I'm actually, f when I'm clearly actually frustrated. Now if she, if she is going through a tough time in her life, I feel bad for her, and if she, I don't watch any of her content, but if she is like a genuinely happy-go-lucky person and she's going through some tough stuff, I feel genuinely sorry, but you can't use that to excuse your actions towards that dog. You can't excuse, you can't use that as an excuse. That being said, this does not justify me yelling at my dog in the way that I did. I am fully aware of that. Should I have gotten as angry as I did in the video? No. Should I have raised my voice and yelled at him? No. However, when my 75-pound Doberman is jumping up and in my face with it with his mouth open, I do, as a dog parent, have to show him that that behavior is unacceptable. Okay, counter-argument. Glasses time. Now, as a person who does have a dog, a cute, my cute, beautiful baby cookie, I know how it feels when the dog pisses you off or the dog does something that is genuinely unacceptable. I understand that does that a few times, all you have to really do is just kind of be like, no. Like, bad girl. You don't have to raise your voice necessarily, you just have to have like a stern, a stern voice and just word it correctly so you can be like, that's not, no, bad girl. Well, my dog's a girl, I don't know if her Doberman is a gender. But just kind of be firm with the dog, be like, that's unacceptable. And it may take a few tries to really get that through their head, but that's another excuse that she's pulling, is the, uh, the unaccept- I'll call it the unacceptable excuse. What the dog did was unacceptable, so I had to, you know, give it a stern talking to. The, what the dog did was unacceptable, so I had to fucking body slam him to the ground, spit on him, uh, and then basically yell like a fucking drunk stepfather at the dog. That's not how it usually should go. Even used, pulling this unacceptable excuse is not even appropriate in this situation because there are only even really rare points where you really have to raise your voice at a dog. It's when the dog does something really unacceptable, like fucking attacks someone, or like an extreme case of a dog doing something that's virtually just unacceptable. Like, I get that a 75 pound Doberman jumping on you would piss you off, but you don't need to fucking... Just fucking... What was his name? True Jordy? Him to the ground? Stop doing shit or everyone's gonna go home! But you don't need to do that. That's not how you fucking deal with a dog. That's... But I want to make it known, regardless of what my, dog's do what my dog does, I should have not acted that way towards him. I agree with that, okay? That's basically everything I just said before, except she just kind of summed it up in one sentence regarding her actions towards the doggy. I want to clarify that I am not a dog abuser or animal abuser in any way, shape, or form. Anyone who has witnessed or heard true animal abuse will be able to clearly see that. My dog in no way, shape, or form was hurt by any action that I displayed in the video. I know people are going to say, you don't know how he really feels, and this is true, but if he audibly was in physically, audibly and physically in pain, it would have been a different story. I also did not spit on my dog, but I understand how it would look like I did. Did I, did I get, did it get, wait, what? Did I get into space and, and take unnecessary actions towards him? Yes, I did, and that was not the way I should have handled this situation. Did I spit on my dog? No. Stop! That whole pair, that when the glasses are going back on, 
that whole paragraph was complete bullshit. Because you, you said that you're, you're not uh, a dog abuser and you didn't uh, abuse the dog. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. There's a difference between, like, lightly kind of, like, maybe slapping the dog's nose if, if the dog is being bad. There's a difference between that and fucking body slamming the dog on the ground. Just because the dog was not audibly or physically in pain doesn't mean that's not abuse. Like, that's... That's like if a Lindy's defense of her fucking throwing her cat across the thing was, well, people do that, but when people do it, they usually throw the cat, like, in front of them. They don't fuck, pick up the cat and just fucking throw it like a football. No, 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 They don't do that. They throw the cat gently, in, like, in front of them if they're being a little shit climbing on stuff. And that goes the same here. When a dog is being, like, bad, you kind of, like, lightly tap it on the nose or, like, be like, no, you're being bad. You don't body slam the dog on the fucking ground like like that. That's definitely abuse right there. That's like... That's like saying if you lightly kind of tap the dog with your foot to kind of get it to move if you were like lying down and the dog was like like lying at the end of the bed and you like lightly tapped it to wake, uh, wake the dog up so you can move. That's like saying that's on the same level as fucking uh, kicking the dog like football. There is a difference between what you did and what a normal human being may do. And yes, you did spit on your dog. You spit on your dog. You spit on your dog. You spit on your dog. My family and I are in the process of getting him training. The training that I have been looking for for him is very expensive because it has to be one-on-one -on -one with a trainer. Ever since he was attacked at the dog park, he isn't okay with being around other dogs. He sticks to me like a Velcro if he is in the presence of another dog, even a little Chihuahua. I, I just can't see him getting what he needs from a group training environment. That being said, I know I personally can learn more effective techniques to get his energy out and to keep him disciplined as well. That whole paragraph had absolutely, I guess, nothing to do with, with it. Uh, mentioning the training, uh, for one, usually, in my, in my preference, is you get a dog that's already trained in basic ways, like with its name, how to go to the bathroom, natural environment, how to deal with other dogs. You know, that, that kind of training. So, you know, you say the dog's name, and the dog will understand that you're calling the dog them and not someone else. So I, that, that really has nothing to do, the expensive thing has nothing to do with it. You don't have to bring up how the dog was attacked because that just kind of proves that you're not really, this whole paragraph is not helping your situation, it's more or less just kind of proving that uh, you're not, uh, you're not in the right point to really have a dog and you should give it to another person. Um, anyone who knows me personally knows I have immense love. I have an immense love for animals, including my own. I would never do anything to purposely, physically, or mentally harm any animal. Again, I should not have yelled at him, or have been physically aggressive as I was, and I am fully aware of that. He was not hurt, nor has he been purposely hurt by me. I know I'll be in many future situations where he's being phys physical but I will not respond in this way again. That's not a full guarantee. Uh, friends and family and I have spent a amount of time uh, with, Sp with Sphinx, and me, and me know that we have a trusting, loving relationship. All he wants to do is be by my side, cuddle with me, and be around me, which I love. My love for him is exponential and infinite, and I do everything I can in my day-to-day -day life to ensure that he is living happily, as happily as he can. I'm sorry that my actions in a particular moment did not reflect that. About my Twitter, I deactivated my account earlier in the day when I went to open it. I was met with an access of notifications of people telling me I messed up, uh, telling me I messed up, a bad person, that I'm going to hell and that I belong in jail, etc. For my own mental health and no other reason besides that, I didn't think it was necessary for me to read those comments at the time. 
Yeah, but people are obviously gonna call you that because you abused your dog. There's no way of going around that. It's a general, it's kind of a general thing on the internet that you're gonna get comments like these from, uh, I don't know, some kind of situation where these comments may be wrong or they may be right. It depends on the situation. Taking that face value, you can understand where these people are coming from, because, well, you see uncut, because well, when you see the fact that it's like, that you, you acknowledge that it's uncut footage that was never supposed to be released to the public, people are going to have more of a reaction of malice towards you, because the word uncut is there. And when the word uncut is there, it means that this footage was never supposed to be given to the public. So people are just going to kind of think that you do this on a day-to-day -day basis, these, these things. But, uh, bring up mental health. If you are having problems, again, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm so sorry. But in this situation, you didn't need to bring that up. You just needed to apologize and give a little bit more context without playing victim. You could have just apologize. You didn't need to give all this information out. Because when you do that, in a certain situation when you bring out information like, oh, my dog and I have a perfect relationship. It was just in the moment. It doesn't seem like an apology. It just seems like you're pulling out excuses from your sleeve. And it's not a generally good decision in this situation. You could have just apologized and it would have been over and done with. But, you know, there's still, like, a lot more. Lastly, I didn't want to make this statement seem like I was, it's me defending myself, because that's not my goal. I do want to point out what actually happened, though. My intent by explaining the situation is to give those of you who are rightfully angry with me the explanation that you deserve. I'm getting my dog into training. I'm, look, I'm looking at ways to improve how I personally train him at home. I'm sorry that you guys had to watch that footage and were upset by it. And I'm sorry for, to my dog for raising my voice and acting aggressively. In my, in my heart, and the words of the people that spend most of the time with me, I know that I, that I am a great dog mom, but not perfect, that I spoil him in the best ways, that he gets all the treats he could ever want, and that the Amazon Prime mailman is probably tired of delivering packages of dog toys to my house. Again, this does not make my actions with the footage okay, but I'm just explaining what my day-to-day -day life is really like, whether you believe me or not. Uh, what did we get from this great, like, four-page paragraph, like, fucking assign homework assignment? Um, it's, it sounds more like an excuse than, than anything, really. It, from, from what I see it as, it seems more like an excuse. And the worst part is, she, <laughs> she wrote all that. Or she wrote it, and she knew that it was that it probably would sound like an excuse to many people, but she still posted it on Twitter. When you have the intent of making a response to something, and it sounds to you, or you think that people will take it as you're trying to make excuses for yourself, you probably shut up, David. You probably shouldn't post it in the first place. That's just like a common rule that I've learned ob observing internet culture for the past few years, uh, or like for most of my life, is just that if you're trying to make a response to something you did wrong, and it sounds, and to you, you think that people will think it's you trying to excuse, make excuses for yourself, you probably shouldn't upload it. So I give this tweet, like the bare bones, it's really bad. It's like absolutely terrible. You should probably delete it and issue out another one that's just a flat-out apology and say that you're taking a break from social media. That's probably what you need. You know, it's pro that's probably what you need. Well, that's, that's the end of the video. And the end of another fucking animal abuse story on this thing. Maybe this one can get 100, uh, over 100 views, too. Uh, hashtag let's get... Uh, Commentary Corner, 100 reviews again with another animal abuse story. Just this one's a little less significant than the last one. God, my channel is dying. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Why do I always trap myself in a way where it sounds really stupid? And if you also like uh, really stupid fucking content like Commentary Corner, 
and want to see it infrequently, or you just like the general stuff I make, why not subscribe, because that's a fun thing to do, and don't forget to turn on the fucking bell. Go check out the first Tales Month video if you haven't yet, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!